Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and today's video is all about common design mistakes and how to fix them. I have been decorating people's spaces for three years now, I would say. Um, I've been very open about the fact that I never went to interior design school. This is really a passion and a hobby of mine. I mean, now it's a business as well, but I have learned a few things on the way. And I know most of you watching either live in a rental apartment or maybe have just bought your first home. So these tips are really aimed at you guys. These are all mistakes I know a lot of you have made, as have I. I am here to show you how to fix them and avoiding these mistakes will really make your space feel styled and designed. So the first design mistake I see that happens a lot in people's homes is not giving your place a fresh coat of paint when you move in, especially if you're renting. Now I know that this isn't always possible, I know that landlords sometimes say don't paint, but if you can, I would highly encourage you to spend that little bit of money up front and refresh your space with a bright color, whether that's a white or a gray or any neutral color that you love. It just makes such a difference and really makes a space feel fresh. I mean, I've said this a million times, but a coat of white paint can do wonders. I think about my apartment and I had it all freshly painted and it just, it just made such a difference. It made the space feel brighter, more open. Take the plunge, paint your space white. And once you have that base, you can add color through accent walls or accessories, but you have that kind of fresh base to build off of. The second mistake I see a lot is not adding mirrors as decor in a dark room, especially if you live in a small space. I actually made this mistake in Sarah Ann's bedroom. I'm gonna link the video up here and pop a few clips from it. I really, I was so happy with how this space turned out, but the one thing I really felt that I was missing above her dresser was a mirror. Mirrors are so great because they bounce light incoming from windows, the one behind me, um, and in a small space, you need all the light you can get. So not only are mirrors really decorative, but they're kind of like an extra light source. So if you live in a small space, or if you're feeling like you have a room that just feels really dark, use a mirror. Just a shameless plug, if you guys are looking for product suggestions, follow me on Instagram at Alexandra Gator. I will leave my handle right here and it's linked down below. And sign up for my newsletter, which can be found at alexandragator.com um, every single week in Instagram stories and in my newsletter that goes out every Wednesday. Um, I offer you guys tons of product suggestions. So if you're looking for a cool mirror, sign up for my newsletter, follow me on Instagram. I have product suggestions coming at you every, almost every single day. The third mistake that I see a lot as well is people going in to decorate their space and trying to make it match. I think that this totally makes sense why you would want things to match, but I would encourage you guys to think outside the box a little and have a lot of fun with mix and matching patterns and colors. I find that when you start picking things that you really love, instead of things that you think are going to match or coordinate really well, your space feels really personalized, really styled and quirky and different. And that's why I love my job and decor and design so much is because you really get to show your personality through the pieces that you choose to have in your home. And I find that when I walk into people's homes where they have a ton of matching furniture and accessories, it just doesn't really feel homey and cozy. I don't really get a sense of their personality. And I can totally understand how this is nerve wracking and how defaulting to matching things maybe um, makes you feel like more secure in the choices that you're making and the things that you're buying. But start out slow. Maybe just buy a bunch of throw cushions that you really like um, instead of having them like an all matching color or color palette and see how you like it. 
That actually brings me to my fourth design mistake, which is not making a mood board. I've talked about mood boards a lot, but they have really been my tool from the very beginning um, when it comes to designing a space successfully. And I get a lot of questions like, where do I start? How do I even start picking furniture? And I think a mood board is a really great place. What I do is I just take a blank Photoshop document, you could even do this in Word or PowerPoint, and I just screenshot products that I'm loving for that room, or maybe products if it's for a client that they've requested. I start dragging things in and then I just play around with it. You might find that you have a lot of natural elements in the room and you know not enough color, or you might realize that you have this really bright accessory that you have to have in the space, and so that's gonna influence your paint color for your wall. And I love the freedom that this gives of really being able to visualize your space before you start purchasing items. Because it can be really daunting to kind of just start ordering a bunch of things and then you get them and you're like, oh, it doesn't match and I've just spent all this money. So mood boards all the way, people. My fifth tip is buying a rug that's too small. I am so guilty of this. I'm gonna show you guys what my living room looked like before I made it over during quarantine. And I had this tiny rug in the middle of the space. The rule of thumb is that your furniture should sit comfortably on top of your rug in your living room. For me, that's my sofa and an accent chair and a coffee table. And before, they were kind of floating outside of the rug. And it really made the space feel a lot smaller than it was. It always bothered me. I always knew it just didn't feel right. So now I've opted for a larger rug. And you guys might notice that I don't have it horizontal. I actually have it vertical. And that's because um, it just wasn't working horizontally, it was too big. But this way, everything fits on the rug and it really frames the living room nicely. When in doubt, just go for the bigger size. I promise you, if you go a size up in your rug, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> My sixth tip is hanging your curtain rod too low. So again, especially if you live in an apartment or a small space, if you can hang your curtain rod at least like three or four inches above your window frame as high as you can go. I did this in my friend Teresa's apartment downstairs and it makes her walls and her ceiling look so much higher than they actually are. Like I just feel like it draws the eye up and makes your space feel a lot bigger and a lot brighter. On the same note, make sure your curtains are touching the floor. You never want your curtains to be short. Again, visually, it's going to make your space look a lot bigger and more open if the curtains touch the floor. They shouldn't be pooling on the floor. They should just kind of be like grazing the floor. Another mistake I see a lot is people not changing out their rental lights. And you guys know that this is one of my favorite things to do. It is such an easy and quick fix. So take all the lights down in your rental, keep them. If you have a place to store them away, I mean even better, store them away until you move out. And until that point, change your lights with pendant lights, wall sconces, um, anything that is super decorative. I know a lot of you guys love my bird light in my living room, and I just feel like it adds so much personality. I feel like rental lights all look the same, and just adding a beautiful decorative focal point, like a pendant light, really ups your game. And when people walk in, they're like, oh yeah, your space is styled. You're, you know what you're doing, <laughs> even if you don't. Okay, another mistake that I see happening a lot is people pushing their furniture against walls. This is a design mistake that happens a lot and I get it. You see a wall in your space and you're like, yeah, my couch should go there or my desk should go there. But I challenge you guys, if you have an apartment, especially a studio apartment, that just is feeling like you've got a lot of dead space, I would encourage you to take a moment, switch your furniture around and try to take your furniture off the walls. I find that even putting a couch in the middle of a room can create a divide, especially if you live in a studio. Pulling your desk out from a wall so you're not like staring at a blank wall, but maybe facing this way instead. So suddenly you're like, yeah, welcome to my office. I'm a boss. <laughs> I just feel like taking furniture off the walls, putting it in the middle of a room can make your space feel a lot cozier, a lot homier, and create divides between rooms. My last tip and a mistake I see happening a lot 
is not adding layers into your space. What I mean by that is not adding layers to a shelf, I actually just did a shelf styling video that I'll pop up here. In your bookshelves or your kitchen shelves or your living room shelves, layers of things add depth. Putting a picture and then putting a trinket in front of that. Adding layers adds dimension, it adds visual interest, and it makes your space look much more styled and interesting. It's not about adding clutter or creating chaos in a space. It really is just adding layers and definition. Maybe on your bed, that's adding a textured throw blanket. So it feels like your bed is cozy and there's like lots of layers and it feels warm and inviting. Those are my tips. I really hope that they helped you guys. Let me know in the comments down below what your most common design questions are. I feel like this could be a fun mini series where I answer common design questions. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. I know that there are so many of you that come back to watch these vi videos but haven't yet hit that button. So please do so. I have so many more makeovers and videos like this coming your way, which I cannot wait for you to see. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> You're not a design mistake, right? It's like plop a cat like this on your couch, and your space will look instantly styled and cute. Right, lots?